This is ESPN Esports. I'm Ardo Cal. Valorant first strike is in full swing. Here are five takeaways so far from the big tournament happening across major regions around the world. Number one. And this is probably the biggest one, and I'm sure that all of you can agree if you're Valorant fans like me. I missed competitive Valorant. I am so happy First Strike is here. We're able to see the top teams competing against each other at the highest levels. I can't wait for the regional championships to take place in December. And honestly, after watching all of that, all that it's going to make me want even more is a Valorant World Championship. And of course, with that will come surprising teams on either side, which brings me to my second point. Not necessarily a huge surprise, but definitely a level up for Gen G. They had a terrific first strike, obviously qualifying for the closed qualifiers. Take a look at Sean. My goodness, does he fit so well in this roster with the French Canadians who have always been magnifique, très bien. I actually asked Coach Blank about the team and, and this success, and he honestly said, we put in a lot of work, we put in a lot of practice, a lot of labbing, but Sean is just nutty at the game. So he is definitely a player that many of you may not have heard of before but you got to keep eyes on sean and in particular gen g as they continue to ramp up and level up in the competitive valorant scene north america could get very spicy if gen g continue the way that they are going my third point is look i know that we've seen some curious results some disappointing results many people might look at sentinels losing to gen g and that's one of the reasons gen g uh, feels elevated right now. T1 lost to Envy. FaZe Clan losing to Equinox and not even making it to the closed qualifiers. That might seem disappointing on paper, and yes, you could see that as a disappointment internally, but I don't see that as completely doom and gloom. Remember, this is the first giant tournament of this magnitude that we are seeing in quite a while. So these teams, yes, they've had time to scrim and lab and create chemistry behind closed doors, but for me, one result here, and I'm going to use FaZe Clan as an example, I'm not concerned just yet. I'm not sounding the alarm bells and saying, oh, FaZe Clan is chalked, and you know what? They should uh, retool and, and, and completely find new players. No, of course not. We have to give this time, and esports does move fast. And there are, I mean, we already see teams like 100 Thieves, which I'll get to in a second, on their 2.0 iteration with different players, right? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that that's not necessary for teams that had uncharacteristic losses or not necessarily the placement you would expect them at in a tournament like this. So for FaZe Clan and other teams that had disappointing showings, in my opinion, all is not lost just yet. Speaking of 100 Thieves, that is my fourth point. 100 Thieves definitely look better in the 2.0 iteration. Of course, we saw some changes. Hiko stuck around. He's now the team captain, having complete control, as it appears, of building the roster. He brought in Steel and Nitro. CSGO counterparts Parts has a lot of familiarity with them. And also from Immortals, bringing in Asuna and Dicey. Asuna, the number three ranked player on the leaderboards that Valorant officially released. And by the way, side note, I can't wait for the leaderboards to be officially released in the near future so that we can consistently see them across region. I think that's going to fundamentally change how teams scout in Valorant. That's a conversation for another day. All we need to know for this purpose is that Asuna is at number three and he is lights out. Hiko doing clutch things in the tournament as we would expect him to do. 1v3, 1v4 doesn't phase Hiko whatsoever. So this team is definitely on the up. I liked what I saw from 100 Thieves so far in the first strike open qualifiers. I expect that to continue from 100T. Number five, last point here. Tens, when he is on his game, is untouchable, is unmatched. We have not seen any player, maybe Wardell is the closest example, 
but we haven't seen many players at all be able to get to that level, to get to that extra gear that Tens possesses and take over games at, seemingly at will. And Tens is a special breed of player that I've heard from many coaches, including TSM's coach, when I spoke with him in an interview a few months ago. With Tens, you just hope to go a 1v1 trade. You know he's going to get his frag. You know he's going to be able to um, enter a site and get some kills. You just hope you can contain it as much as you can. That's how good a player Tens is. So those are five things from uh, First Strike so far that are my takeaways. But there are so many things to look forward to as we march on to crown regional champions in the first event fully produced by Riot. 2020 is going to end with a bang and 2021 is going to get even more interesting. Let us know in the comments below what you think thought of certain team performances in first strike in our first open qualifier which teams impressed you which teams disappointed you what players stood out for you let us know in the comments below